Okay, welcome back. Dr. P here, and in this lecture video, we'll go ahead and take a look at some reactions at the alpha carbon. Uh, in particular, we'll look at alpha halogenation. Uh, in particular, alpha bromination. Um, you can do alpha chlorination or alpha iodination. Uh, alpha bromination is actually, there's a way to, to do an alpha bromination involving carboxylic acids that we'll take a look at. And then we'll also look at alkylation of enolates, and that uh, will lead us into a couple of um, uh, synthetic techniques, the acetoacetic ester synthesis and the malonic ester synthesis. So let's take, look, take a look at alpha halogenation. All right, that was kind of a sloppy alpha there. I do apologize, but... So we could have some kind of aldehyde or ketone here, and then we'll treat it with Br2, and then we'll either use um, H plus, um, actually let's, let's do H3O plus, O plus, or O H minus. And what we'll end up getting now is one of the alpha carbons being replaced by a bromine. And um, figure 22.4 goes over the acid catalyzed mechanism for this, but um, I think I'll, I can go ahead and uh, do that um, as well. And I, I also go over the base catalyzed mechanism. So we would have, the, the, the key here is actually, the first step is formation of the enolate. So I'm going to have my acid, um, I'm just going to call it H plus in this case, you could do H3O plus. Um, yeah, why don't I do H3O plus, sorry, H, O, H, H, lone pair, positive charge. Let's go ahead and protonate that. And then I'll get R, C, double bond, O, H, positive charge, C, H, H, R prime. And next we'll go ahead and our water then can come in and pull off that hydrogen and this gives us our enol. So when we're in acid our first couple of steps are going to involve formation of the enol. And now I can have my bromine and you remember from bromination of alkenes, our CC double bond is reasonably nucleophilic, and so we can go ahead and get addition. Um, these electrons will kick down in the process, kind of the driving force, if you will, and that gives us R, C, double bond, O, H, lone pair, positive charge, C, Br, R prime, H, and then we'll go ahead and another molecule of water here, for example, can come along and pull off that proton. Those electrons go there, and we end up getting now our final product. There we go. Okay. Now, what happens in base? Well, in base, we do our deprotonation of the alpha carbon first. So, 
So we'll have R, C, double bond, O, C, in parallel pair, H, R prime, H, O, H, minus. We will get our deprotonation. We'll get those electrons onto the alpha carbon. Now we do have our resonance structure. So I could, you know, in red here, show what's going on with my resonance structure. Or we could get our actual reaction where I've got my Br2. And I simply have those electrons attacking the bromine, and those ones uh, uh, go there to break that BrBr bond, and now I've got my product. And there we go, there's our base catalyzed mechanism. Now the thing with the base catalyzed mechanism is we go ahead and we form the enolate. And that's kind of the key to a lot of the reactivity um, of uh, the alpha carbon. Um, it's the formation of the enolate. So if we can make an enolate, that is going to be uh, pretty reactive. So we could actually alkylate an enolate. So what would that look like? Well, in the presence of base, we will form our enolate. So let's just call it B minus for our base here. Really should put in my lone pairs. H, R prime. So we get our enolate. And then we could add an alkyl halide. And so we could have, let's say, um, so let's say some kind of primary alkyl halide, and we will get an SN2. Reaction. And it's going to kick off our halogen, and we will end up with R C to bond O C H R prime C H two R double prime. We could actually repeat, and then we'd have R C to bond O C. CH2R double prime, R prime, and then maybe here we've got CH2R triple prime. So we could stick different, potentially different um, uh, alkyl groups on here. So it's a good way of sticking something on the alpha carbon. Now, one question is how do we, how are we going to um, make these enolates? And we'll want to uh, make the enolates. Um, there's, well, there, there's really there's kind of a, a couple of different ways that we could go about doing this. Um, well, 
One is to use a strong base. And that could be something like LDA. LDA is lithium diisopropyl amid. And the amid there actually refers to uh, having a nitrogen with a negative charge. So here is LDA. And this is a very good base because when it's pro protonated, you have diisopropyl amine, which has a pKa of around 36. So this is a very strong base. Um, or we could keep enolate concentration low. More on this in chapter 23. So we'll talk about this second one uh, more in chapter 23 uh, when we do some of the carbonyl condensation reactions. But for now, we'll focus on let's say using a strong base to make our enolates and then we'll be doing be able to do an alkyl um, an alkylation okay now let's see here what else can we do oh there are some syntheses I, I need to backtrack for a minute because I forgot to tell you about about the HVZ reaction uh, this is the hell Volhart Zelinsky reaction um, and it's a way of making a alpha, um, an alpha brominated carboxylic acid. So we start with a carboxylic acid that has an alpha proton available. And if we treat this with PBr3, we'll actually get Let's do it this way. Uh, I'll do one Br2 PBr3 and then two H2O. And we'll actually get CHBrCOH. Now, what's happening here? Well, if I, oh, sorry, that's a little, little slanted there. Let's straighten that up there. If I start with just my PBR3, what does PBR3 do? Well, PBR3 will do what SOCl2 does, except with bromine. So it's our way of making our acid bromide. Now this is in equilibrium with our acid bromide enol, which then could react with the bromine. And again, our enol can add to the bromine, kick off the other uh, bromide ion, and we'll get bromination, we'll get alpha bromination. So now we've got this um, alpha brominated acid bromide and then reacting with water in the second step hydrolyzes our acid bromide to give us our carboxylic acid. So um, this was a reaction I forgot to mention before I started talking about alkylation of enolates. Uh, but just wanted to, to show you guys that. It's kind of cool because um, it's like you sort of you, you, you change your carboxylic acid to something else and that enables you to go ahead and stick the bromine on there and not have to worry about it and then you regenerate the carboxylic acid. I don't know. I think that's kind of kind of clever. All right. So um, 
let's look at using um, alpha carbon alkylation in synthesis. And specifically, we have the malonic ester synthesis and the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Now, the malonic ester synthesis is a way of making an alpha alkylated um, carboxylic acid. And so what we start off with is uh, diethyl malonic ester. So we've got ethyl, ET, O, C, double bond O, C, H, H, C, double bond O, O. So this is diethyl malonate. That is our malonic ester. And one interesting thing here is that because of the alpha carbon being alpha to two carboxyls here, our pKa is reduced. It's around 13. So we don't have to use LDA as a strong base. We can use uh, something like sodium ethoxide. And we'd want to use ethoxide because if we use sodium hydroxide, we could get saponification of the esters. So we want to have our base match up with our Alkoxy, alkoxy group there. So what we can do then is um, do, 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 do. we'll go ahead and um, act this with, let me think how I want to, um, I want to go through this here. So we'll do one NaOET and then two Rx and then three we'll do H3O plus and heat. And now what we're going to end up with is R C H H C O O H. We have an alkylated carboxylic acid, or rather, an alkylated acetic acid, I should say. We have a carboxylic acid. So what is going on here? How does this, gosh, sorry, I keep, keep getting a little slanted there. Try to keep everything straight. How does this happen? Well, let's take a look at the process. Um, really, we can take a look at the, we'll take a look at our mechanism here. So I've got E-T-O-C, double bond O, C, H, H, C, double bond O, O, E-T. And I've got my OET minus, which comes along and deprotonates. So I have ETOC, double bond O, C, H, lone pair negative charge, C, double bond O, OET. And then if I have Rx, I can do my SN2. 
Now you'd want your um, alkyl halide to be primary or secondary, so you can actually do a reasonable SN2 on it. And that will give me now ETO, C, the bond O, C, R, H, C, the bond O, O, E, T. Now I can repeat this if I want to and get a, so I could do that again and get a second one. I could do a different alkyl group, uh, R prime. And then when I go ahead and use acid and heat, I get a decarboxylation. So the first thing I get is, um, well, actually I get hydrolysis and decarboxylation. So let's write that. So the first thing I get is my esters turn into carboxylic acids. And then I lose one. So maybe I'll just put it in a, a bracket here. H O C double bond O C R H C double bond O O H. So that's my hydrolysis. And then I lose one of those acids as CO2, CO2, hydrogen just gets, gets pulled off. Anyway, and I'll go on now and I'll have now my R, C, H, H, C, double bond O, O, H. There's my final, let me show you guys that, my final product. So key steps here are deprotonation by our base of the alpha um, protons that are in between the two carboxyls. Then we could, can do an SN2. We could actually repeat that and stick another alkyl group on. And then we hydrolyze to make a diacid and heat it up to decarboxylate. And that gives us now our substituted, um, excuse me, our alkylated carboxylic acid. A similar synthesis is the acetoacetic ester synthesis. So that was the malonic ester synthesis. We can also have the acetoacetic ester, acetoacetic ester synthesis. And in the acetoacetic ester synthesis, we'll start out with E T O C the bond O C H H C the bond O C H three. So here's our aceto. So that's an acetyl group here. So that's aceto acetic ester and pKa of that guy is around eleven. So even more acidic. So now we can go ahead and do the same sort of thing. N-A-O-E-T followed by R-X and then H3O plus and heat and we will end up getting C-H-H-R and that's that guy, that's that guy there, double bond O, CH3. So now we have a ketone, or an alkylated acetone. So see acetone with an alkyl group. So we've made a ketone. So these are some kind of good ways to make um, uh, carboxylic acids and ketones. So, I won't do the mechanism for the acetoacetic ester synthesis. You guys can, can do that. It, it follows the same, um, uh, the, the same steps that the malonic ester synthesis does. So what do I want to say here? Use malonic ester synthesis to make carboxylic 
acids. Use acetoacetic ester synthesis to make uh, methyl ketones. Let me scoot that over. Sorry about that. So you can see here that our alkylated acetone here, well, it's a methyl ketone with something here. So it's a way to get a couple of, you know, to make it more complex, uh, you know, have a branched chain at the, um, at the alpha, not the alpha carbon. Uh, so those are some ways of making use of alkylation um, at the alpha carbon. And um, that pretty much wraps up the major points for chapter 22, actually. Um, and there are some practice problems um, on, you know, using this in synthesis and stuff. And um, I'll make sure I give you a list of practice problems from the text that will be helpful as well. All right. Well, until next time, stay safe out there. Bye now.